welcome to the Heroes of Cosplay Sanctuary. This is your host, Scotty B. Friends, this week we're talking about how fake all of it is. It's all fake. Everything in cosplay is based on fiction. And you probably know that. And we're showing, we're showing a lot of ourselves. But really, it's a fictional space. They are fictional characters. We portray them. But the graphics, the effects, the quotes, it's all made up. And it's made up so that you enjoy it. It's made up so that you like what you see, so that you relate to it. But it is all a fiction. And really, in a way, you're an actor on a stage. You are putting forth all of this work, portray a character and interpret a character the way that maybe the industry does it. You're going to create some TikToks and some funny things while you dress up as a character. But it is a character that we portray. The whole world becomes a stage. And sometimes we go overboard. We go overboard with the fakeness. We, we go beyond the makeup and we start to create alterations so that we can be validated by our audience. And there's a lot that I'm talking about there. That is That is a very, I guess, serious thing that we should get into in the cosplay community because the image is what we're going after and, and i know that there are a lot of people out there who because they're trying to create an image because they are trying to be something bigger that they want to create more attention that they alter themselves in some way positive or negative and that there is a lot of talk about you need to be yourself you need to do and you need to accept yourself you know, you need to look at who you are and love yourself. But at the same time, they're telling you to get cosmetic surgery. At the same time, they're telling you to get Botox. At the same time, they're telling you to alter everything about you, to crash diets, to work out a lot, to take things that will enhance muscles, to create a look and an image and lots of things with our hands, a look and an image that isn't actually you. It is something that a doctor told you they could do for you and you handed them a bunch of money and you became something else. You enhanced yourself. And that is an alteration. And that necessarily, I mean, you can go in whatever camp you want. There are a lot of people who do this themselves and I don't necessarily agree with all or any of that. There are many things that you can do for yourself outside of that. And yes, being a character may require some makeup and shadowing and contouring and things to change your appearance. But really changing your appearance is a personal decision, not something that we get into very much on the show, but it is not something that I necessarily think that anyone should feel pressure to do in order to gain more attention on social media or in any other space, that you should not have to make yourself Plastic, inflamed, enlarged, change the way your lips look, change the way your facial features are, your bone structure, your cheeks. Make sure that you never have any wrinkles in a forehead so that it never actually makes, <laughs> makes any facial expressions at all. You don't have to do that for a character. You don't have to do that for your audience. Maybe you do it for yourself, but whatever is going on inside of you, deal with that before you project something to an audience because you think that it will gain you validation, that it will gain you likes, that it will make you money. Because if you're coming at that with the wrong energy, and it's certainly in terms of cosplay, I don't think that's the message that I personally want to bring to the cosplay community to say, if you want to be these characters, you have to change who you are physically mentally weird to be them trust it's all fake so who can you trust online who can you go to when you support the wrong ideas in quotes the wrong ideas based on your belief or who you like so if just because you like somebody you've never met them you've never met me and I can tell you that I'm giving you all of this face value. And I can tell you that this is my belief system. And I can tell you what I'm all about. Because the thing that's nice about online spaces is you can talk about ideas before you talk about people and things. Because 
generally the higher concepts for me are all in ideas and i do love cosplay because there are a lot of ideas floating around inside of the cosplay world and there's a lot of skills to build that kind of information can always be shared online the things that people generally don't talk about are all the things going on behind the scenes that you don't necessarily know about they're affecting people's lives because we don't share that and there's a good reason we don't share that because all the people on earth don't need to know every single detail about us and it has nothing to do with cosplay most of the time so there's no reason to overshare all of that with an audience who may be able to leverage that or might be able to get into certain things that you would not want them to get them to so you basically make sure that people don't know anything about you because you can't trust them and you have to take all of that at face of value Con friends, okay? This is a weird term. It's a fair weather friend. It's an acquaintance, okay? People in the cosplay community very often say that they're friends, but really it's that you're an acquaintance. You're somebody that, that you've met online, you've met in a digital space, you've messaged them, they've messaged you back. It's very cordial. It's very high level. But when it comes down to it, if you meet these people in your life, they definitely have their own world that they live in and they are not necessarily your friends now friends can occur inside of the cosplay community don't get me wrong and certainly from my uh where i am with everything is you know i'm i'm sure i'm a friend but i'm i'm an acquaintance i'm a contact i'm a point of reference i'm somebody who will be in a good positive space for you at a con somebody that you can talk to in confidence when you see them because that is what i am all about i am just the person who's there I'm a sounding board. I have decent advice, I think. And I like to be able to have discussions with people at conventions. And it's unfortunate that really, for the most part, I haven't. The conventions that I've gone to, it's been um, people keep their distance at, con at cons. They're always on a mission. It seems like they always have to have their camera ready and they always have to be explaining things to their audience. And they always have to be at a photo shoot and they have to be in front of things or they, they are busy. So there's very there's very little interaction, as far as I'm concerned, at a convention outside of what I would consider just to be like a click or people that you came there with. Maybe that's not true for everyone. Maybe that's just me, and maybe that's just the demographic that I support. I'm not 20 anymore, so maybe I just don't meet people at conventions the way that other people do. But I'm not fake. And I'm not going to be that a different person when I meet you in front of you or in a convention setting, or if I meet you here, or if I have a booth at a convention, or if I'm talking to you online, there are really no differences. And I don't like to, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it if I was going to do it right. I wouldn't say this isn't what I like, and then just be that person in front of everyone. Sure. There are lots of things that I don't talk about, but there's reasons for that. It's not that interesting, first of all. Like, you don't need to hear about how many times I go to get groceries or anything like that. Nobody needs to know about a lot of this stuff. But to share a hobby and an interest and ideas with you, of course, I want you to be successful. I want you to feel like you've gotten something out of these conversations and the time that you've spent watching and listening to the podcast and the YouTube channel, that there is something coming that will be offered to you and cosplayers will get this thing and that it will be of value to you that it will be able to you'll be able to build something with it that there'll be enough information there to say oh okay well the, here's a roadmap for me this is great that's the whole thing but you don't have to trust that i'm the person to listen to for that i'm just a guy on the internet right authentically fake like this is this is the final thing that i want to talk about today about how fake all of this can get being authentically fake and how you avoid that. So if you if you have to ask, or if they have to ask, like if somebody has to ask you about what that is, like if you have to question the authenticity of what people are telling you online, then it's probably not a good thing. Like if there's there's probably a flag that needs to be put up. Many people have many sides to themselves. You have to be careful about what you share. 
you have to be careful about who you are as your avatar or who you decide you are going to be, whether you're a Twitch streamer, whether you're a gamer, whether you're a do-gooder, I don't know, like whatever you decide to be with this cosplay world that you're in, whatever it is that you're doing, whoever it is that you're portraying, the closer it is to you, the easier it is on you to continue to be or to do. That's really how it goes. You know, I'm not really here to tell you one thing and then go do something else while I'm not online. Like that is not who I am. That is not what I'm about. That is not what I want to tell you about. That isn't the kind of person that I want to tell you to be. But what I do want to tell you is there's definitely a difference between who you are at work, who you are at home, who you are in cosplay. Like there are different sides of you. Not all of it's that important, but just because you're not talking about your work and your relationships and, you know, your environment and your bills and things like that online in terms of cosplay does not mean you're not being authentic. The authenticity comes from how you explain everything, what you explain, and the person that you reflect and are in front of your audience. And yeah, this is just how I am. Uh, maybe it's not how I talk all the time because I have no forum for it. I don't go to work and sound like this because, man, I would last a day. <laughs> People can't handle that, right? Normally, you just have to be open. And I try to be, and I want to hear from you and listen to your stories. And I want to provide the information that will help you. That is what I am doing here. And there's the 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 promise and the impression. So if you have a gut feeling about somebody, like maybe me, whatever you think about this show and what I'm about, that's fine. Because it's your impression. It's the gut feeling that you get. It's the acquaintance that you have with a certain individual, and it is what you think about them. And that you should follow all the time. If you are not getting along with somebody and you don't really resonate with their message, then don't worry about it. Move on. Go find the person that you do resonate with. And that is why, you know, a while ago, I unfollowed probably, I don't know, a thousand accounts over the course of the last five or six months. I have been unfollowing all over the place because I don't need to follow 5,000 people, 3,000 people. I can't keep up with all of that. So why am I following? Why am I, why am I spending all of my time keeping up? I don't need to do that. I have a lot to do. I have lots of work to do. I have free time that I need to get to. So trust your gut with the people that are aligned with you in the space. And yes, that you really only want to keep people who understand you, who understand what you're about, who get the cosplay stuff that you're into and things that you're not into. I'm not into building a TikTok following. So I'm probably not going to go find a bunch of TikTokers who are gatekeeping other TikTokers and trying it into that group. That isn't what I'm about. So I'm not going to do it. But do Deliver on what you promise to people being authentic. So if you were telling a company or an individual, this is what you do, this is what you provide, this is how much it costs, whatever it is that you're laying out, get that scoped, and get it in writing and make sure that what you're doing with them resonates with you, that it's mutual, that it's something you're not just promoting because you need a promotion, because you need to make the money. Don't make it about that. Make it about something you really do think is cool or believe in because it's going to be a lot easier for you to sell. It's going to be a lot easier for you to be authentic and not lie about how great something is, but that the fact that you really just like it, just like this mug right here. I like this. It's really cool. I think everybody should buy Arrakis runs on Duncan. I just, there's my product placement. But that you can be picky. You can be picky. You can choose what you want. You don't ever have to feel like you're stuck or that you're in painted yourself into a cosplay corner. That isn't what it's about. But the fact of the fakeness that exists, whether it is the character that we portray, whether it is the people that we know online, or whether it is just us, there is a lot of fakeness and layers of fake in the cosplay community that we have to be made aware of and be careful about. And that is what I have for you today, folks. Thanks so much again for being here. Like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure that you hit the bell for the notifications on new episodes that are coming out this season. 
And we will see you later. This is Scotty B with the Heroes of Cosplay Sanctuary saying bye-bye, everybody.